In this video, I wanna be talking all things stretching. Should we be doing stretching? How long should we be doing stretching? And I wanna tell you the most key time that you should be doing stretching in order to prevent risk of injury. So let's dive straight into that one. So firstly, if you are new to the channel, my name's John, I run this channel called John W Sports Injury, where I'm striving to do three simple things for you. Help you understand your body, get rid of pain and weakness, and strive forward and hit your health and well-being goals. So let's talk all things stretching. And the reason I talk about stretching is this is something that comes up a lot in clinic. And it's really a statement that I have to make to a lot of clients that I thought would be helpful for you to understand about stretching. And this is that people often say to me, I don't really do enough stretching, but I tend to do stretching before I start my sport or my exercise or going for a run or whatever it may be. And actually, unfortunately, the news that I have to hit people with here is that if that's the only time that you're doing stretching and static stretching, which I'll come on to in a second, then ultimately we're probably not going to reduce our risk of injury or actually improve our performance. But by no means am I saying that we shouldn't be doing stretching. So what I wanna dive in to do now is look into a little bit more detail about how we should be doing our stretching what type of stretching we should be doing, and the key time and the key phrases that you need to remember about your stretching in order to get your best bang for buck or benefit out of stretching. So firstly, if I can just split stretching into two, we have static stretching and dynamic stretching. And the reason I wanna split those into two is that they're very different types of stretching with two clear purposes, and they're very different purposes. So static stretching, the stretching that we might be most familiar with is where we're looking to lengthen a muscle in and hold into that length and state and hold that for a period of time. Why are we doing this? Well, what we want to be doing is improving the flexibility of that muscle. We want to be making them looser, putting less pressure on our joints. Dynamic stretching, on the other hand, is where we're looking to take a muscle between its states. So we're going from a lengthened state to a shortened state, and we're going between those states, building the intensity and ultimately looking to fire up those muscles. So we have very different purposes. So. If you are somebody who goes, well, I don't really do my stretching, but I try to before I nip out for that run or before I play that football match or before I go into the gym. Well, ultimately, we're not gonna get those improvements in flexibility or it's not enough to have reduced our risk of injury. Actually, at those points, that's where we wanna be doing our dynamic stretching. That's where we wanna be preparing the muscles for what they're about to do, which is to go between these states. But by no means am I saying that we shouldn't be doing static stretching because it is something that I believe in. But the key phrase that I want you to understand, and then I'll come and talk about the key time for doing this, is little and often. Because with our static stretching, it's something that we need to build upon. So when we're doing a static stretch and we're lengthening the muscle for 30 seconds, and sorry, that's the key time frame. We want to be holding that muscle in a lengthened state for at least 30 seconds. Why this magic number of 30 seconds? Well, that's what we believe activates what we call stretch reflex. What's the stretch reflex? Well, that's when a message gets pinged to a brain by the receptors in those muscle cells to say, ultimately, we need to relax this muscle. And that will improve the flexibility and the feeling of looseness in the muscle. So what we need to do is consistently be doing this because what we then are able to do is change what we call the resting length of that muscle. So the muscle is able to have a more increased range of motion so that it can put less pressure on our joints, we can get more out of that muscle because we have more range available to us now. So when's the key time that we should be doing this? I've said that little and often is the key phrase and we can be doing our static stretching every day. So make time to be doing that every day. But for me, a crucial window for completing static stretching it's not before we do our game of football or our, or our run or our gym session, it's actually as soon as we finish. If we think about the benefits of static stretching, we're looking to lengthen these muscle fibers. So if we walk into that football pitch or we walk into that gym environment and our muscles are at that resting length and we start to work those where we're shortening the muscles, lengthening, shortening, lengthening, over the period of that exercise intensity, the muscles might end up in a slightly shortened state. Now, we can leave those muscle fibers, we can walk away and not do any stretching, and over time that might compound and we start to lose that range of motion in those muscle fibers. Or we can do the alternative thing, we can finish the session and they can be in a shortened state, they're nice and warm though, they're like nice and sort of pliable muscle tissue, and we can perform some static stretching where we look to return those muscle fibers, if we can, back to where we started, back to their resting state. 
Then, if we think about our little and often approach, we go away and spend the next few days or week, uh, weeks be continuing with that static stretching, we're starting then to lengthen those muscles and improve that resting state. So then when we go back to the gym environment, we're starting with a bigger range of motion. We go through the shortening process in the session. We cool out by doing our static stretching to return them to resting length, and then we carry on building. What happens over a period of time is that we end up with a greater range of motion available at that muscle tissue and we end up with more flexible muscles, placing less pressure on our joints and we can get more out of those muscle fibres as a result. So I hope that's helpful. That is a quick breakdown of something that I discuss with a lot of people because I know that stretching as a topic is something that could be greatly debated. I even know a lot of medical practitioners who have different views around stretching, both static and dynamic. You'd be able to find research out there around both types of stretching and whether they're beneficial or not beneficial and conclusions that could be quite different. So this is very much a video based upon my opinion and my clinical experience. But what I want you to do is take away from the fact that if you are one of those people and if you're one of these people, you are by no means in the minority and in fact the majority that is just stretching out before they do their exercise. Oh, I'm off to do my exercise, my stretch before I start. I'd almost say don't worry about it. What I would say is change that to dynamic stretching because you're going to get increased results, increased performance and actually potentially have a better chance of reducing risk of injury. But what I do want you to do is substitute that from before to after the session and then allow yourself to build that consistency into your daily routine. Remember, you should only be holding these stretches for about 30 seconds. You can hold them for longer if you want, but it can be that we can have a really effective five minute stretching program built into your daily routine that's gonna bring huge results to your overall flexibility and well-being. Has that been helpful for you? If it has and you've made it this far through the video, firstly, I'm very grateful. You can do me a favor and smash that like button because that's gonna help others to understand this concept around stretching. And if you do like this type of content, this is the exact type of stuff that I want to keep bringing to you to affect your daily lives. So hit that subscribe button so you can join me on the next video. And speaking of other videos, here's another one to help you on that way. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.